Today we're doing five grammar questions in five minutes or less to give you the basic strategies for how you can handle grammar questions on the digital SAT. Now, as always, we want to look at the question first. And as you can see, the question for all grammar questions and punctuation questions is going to be which choice completes the text so that it conforms to the conventions of standard English. When you see that phrase, conventions of standard English, I want you to just look at your answer choices. If you see punctuation changing, obviously you're dealing with a punctuation question. If you just see a few different forms of words, then it's probably just grammar. So all I need to do here is just take a look at where the blank is. It says species blank to their environment. That is all I need to read. Since species would be replaced with they, I just need to find a word that works with they. And sure enough, the first option, they adapt, is perfect. I'm going to mark that and move on. You can see that the other three options would only work if the subject was a he, she, or an it. And anytime you see three answers that have something in common, the answer is almost always the other one. Our second grammar question introduces the concept of pronouns. And when I look at my answer choices, I see them, they, those ones, those people. So now I'm going to take a look at the blank here. It says, we owe blank an immense debt of gratitude. And that means that I need to use either them or those people. We wouldn't use those ones or they after a verb. And so I know I'm between either them or those people. And the question is, do I need to say people here? Generally, when I use them, I'm referring to the previous plural noun. So I need to read backwards. So let's take a look at our text here and look at the previous sentence. It says, these same qualities are still evident today. They demonstrate our commitment to preserving the liberties we hold dear. So the previous sentence uses two plural words, qualities and liberties. And I don't think I'm referring to those in this blank space. If we keep going further back, we can see that the previous sentence before says strength for our forefathers to stand up to tyranny and fight for their freedom. So forefathers are the people that we're talking about here. And since we haven't mentioned them in a while, it would be good to remind the reader that we're talking about those people not them, possibly the liberties or possibly the qualities. We don't want to have potential ambiguity. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those people and that would be the correct answer for the second question. Third grammar question again, the question tells me conventions of standard English. I got to look at the blank here. It says firefighters are equipped with more powerful tools blank the past. When we do comparisons, it's important to make sure that the two things on each side of the word than are the same kind of thing, that we're comparing two things that are similar. Tools in the past are two different things. One is tools, one is time. So we need something in between those to represent the concept of tool. Since tools is a plural word, all I need is a plural pronoun in the middle. And that's where the B option works perfectly, than those of the past, than the tools of the past. Make sure that when you are doing comparisons, if you see a question like this with these kinds of answers, Pay close attention to what you're putting in the blank because a lot of times I see this kind of question on the SAT and it's a great way to trick people. Fourth question, you know what to do. We're going to take a look at the blank here. It says, Gardner's work continues to be widely read today for blank insight. That's all I need to read right there. So the subject of this sentence is Gardner's work not Gardiner himself. And so I'm going to want to choose a word here that could represent his work. Work being the key word here. And you'll see I have options like his, their, its, and its. One with an apostrophe, one without an apostrophe. In this case, the word work would be replaced by it. And since we're using it in the possessive, we're going to say its without the apostrophe. Remember that the apostrophe with it always means it is. And so if you need to double check yourself, just plug that in. If I said for it is insight, it would be wrong. If I said for its insight without the apostrophe, it would be right. That's what we're going to mark and move on. Fifth question. Uh, we can see here that we're dealing with apostrophe S, both in plural and singular. Taking a look at the options here, it says his blank virtuosity and songwriting skills were equally impressive. So looking at my choices, we're talking about the band Queen and Freddie Mercury. And if we know that the band's name is Queen, I can instantly rule out B because Queen's with an S is not the name of the band. The name of the band is Queen. But in this case, the word Queen is describing the bandmates. So I don't need to put an apostrophe S on the name Queen at all. So that leaves me between C and D. C has bandmate apostrophe S. D has bandmates apostrophe. 
So the question is, are there multiple bandmates? And the answer is yes. And that's just how bands work generally. You would not refer to bandmate singular generally unless you were talking about one specific individual. So I can understand here that they're talking about the rest of the band queen. So I would say queen band mates apostrophe Answer D. Let's sum up what we did here with grammar. First of all, when we're dealing with verbs, we need to make sure the subject and the verb agree. This is honestly some of the easiest stuff in the English language. You should have no problem with that. When it comes to pronouns, make sure that there's no ambiguity and that it's really clear who you're referring to. If you're using a plural pronoun, but you have other plural nouns in the previous sentence, there's a chance it could create some confusion and you might need to be more specific. Watch out for it's with an apostrophe and it's without an apostrophe and make sure that you know your apostrophe s rules and when and where to use it. And when you're doing comparisons, make sure that the things on both sides of those comparisons are actually the same. If not, you're going to need a pronoun in there to sort of balance the comparison. That sums up most of the grammar questions that you're going to see on the SAT. So good luck.